Hey friends, Pastor Bill Walden here with Build Up the Church. Hope you're doing great. Greetings from Cajamarca, Peru, uh, down here teaching at the Bible College for a few weeks. This is a devotional for March the 8th, 2024, and it's out of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12. Uh, Jesus, once again, is in the last week of his life. He's being questioned by those who uh, want to trip him up in his words, but he's also being questioned by uh, a scribe who has heard Jesus answer uh, his uh opposition, he's heard Jesus answer the opposition very well. And so now he comes to Jesus, and he seems to be more of an honest uh, inquirer. And so we read this. One of the scribes came to him, having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well. And he asked Jesus, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. It's called the Shema, something very... uh, famous and well-known and a real staple of the Jewish people in the Old Testament. And then Jesus said, uh, here's the answer to your question about what's the greatest commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment, and the second like it is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. I think a lot of people, you know, when they think about Christianity, they think about uh, things that you have to do, things that you can't do, as far as actions, uh, words, uh, you know, external things. But Jesus says here, really, that what God the Father had said in the Old Testament is, those things are secondary to your heart. <laughs> you know, uh, my wife and I have been married 42 years at this point, and I could do all the right things but not have the heart for her. I could just do it out of obligation, sense of duty. Maybe if uh, she's not a nagger, but if she was, I could say, well, this will get her off my back. And I could fulfill the actions, say the words, but not have the love in my heart for her. I would be failing. And so Jesus says, listen, God wants your heart to love him with your thought life, uh, with your actions, with your words, with the, the strength of your body. In whatever way, love for God could and should be manifested, depending on the situation. Do it with love for him, not out of obligation, not out of shame, not trying to uh, win your way to heaven because we can't. Salvation is, is a gift that God gives to us when we come to him and confess our need for a savior. So we love God with everything in us. And, and if, we loving, if we are loving God with everything in us, the next thing is just going to come naturally, love your neighbor as yourself. Because if you're loving God with everything that's in you, you realize very quickly that he, loves, he loved you when you were totally unlovable. And if he had loved you when you were totally unlovable, how could we not uh, love our neighbor as we love ourselves? And I, I think about loving my neighbor. It's, uh, it could be uh, reduced down, boiled down to duty once again. Somebody needs a ride, I give them a ride. Somebody needs to borrow some money, I give them money. Uh, Somebody needs some help, I I help them. But I could do all of those things without loving them, without seeing the preciousness of them, without seeing the value of them, without realizing that God loves them uh, deeply and sincerely. And so uh, it made me think of 1 Corinthians 13. Let me read this to you. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, if I have the utmost eloquence, but I don't have love, I'm like a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Cymbal with a drum set or in an orchestra is nice in its place, but you don't want to just hear it over and over again. It's annoying. And to, to supposedly love people like that, it's, it's not a beautiful thing. If I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can move mountains, but I don't have love, I am nothing. If I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, if I, if I was a martyr for the cause, but have not love, it profits me nothing. And so Paul here is essentially saying the same thing that Jesus uh, is saying and was saying to that scribe. Love is the, is the primary thing. If you feel trapped in a religious, <clears throat> excuse me, experience where there's duty, 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 uh, there's shame, there's guilt, there's obligation, but there's no sense of love in your heart, uh, 
I would encourage you to, to focus not on your duty as much as you focus on God's love. And consider how much God has loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, he drew you to himself. And when you get very familiar with that and you're able to go deep in that, you're going to discover, I believe, that your love for your neighbor is just going to start flowing out. And life with God will no longer be duty and heavy. It won't be a burden. It won't be a have to do, but it'll be a get to do. So uh, Jesus obviously said it well. He always said it well. Love God with everything in you. Love your neighbor as yourself. So I pray that you'll be able to experience that as, as the, the weeks, the months, and the years go by, that you'll experience the richness of that kind of love. So thanks for watching. God bless you.